Howdy folks! I'm coming at you with actual content today, which is something I haven't done in a while, but I'm hoping to get back into it. I was reading this article in Scientific American, December 2008 issue, Driving Toward Crashless Cars, and it was talking about all of the safety improvements in cars, all the way from like anti-lock brakes, which we've had for a while, to all of these new things that can detect when you're about to collide with something or you're about to back over something, uh, things that can tell you when a car's in your blind spot, and even other systems that take control of the car that will not let you leave your lane or that will break for you if you're about to hit something all the way up to cars that completely drive themselves. And it talks about the DARPA challenges with the autonomous cars. And it's all stuff I've heard before, pretty much. So it's not that new, but they had a prediction in here from the, uh, the CEO of General Motors who said that GM would be marketing autonomous cars within 10 years, which seems a little bit soon, considering that we don't really have anything that close to it right now, but still I think 20 years is an unreasonable, and that got me thinking, if we have autonomous cars in 20 years, will my children, who are at this point hypothetical, not know how to drive? Like will they not have that experience? That's really a strange idea to me. Because in my life, driving is such a big thing. I grew up in the suburbs, I went to school even further out of town. I live in town now, but I still drive every day, just about, and it's just a huge part of my life. The whole driving experience, you know, just driving over and over again until it becomes second nature. I think a lot in the car, and I think a lot about driving in the car, and how I feel like I don't even consciously know how to drive anymore. That my body just knows how to drive. You know, it knows how to avoid accidents and how to stay in my lane. Like, I couldn't do all of this stuff. It's way too complicated to drive consciously. Um, but doing it unconsciously, you know, that's no problem. And I love driving. It's, I mean, for me, it symbolizes freedom and it's relaxing. And I do a lot of my best thinking in the car, and I always have. Especially when I was 16, 17, 18. I was spending, you know, an hour or two in the car a day just because I had to drive back and forth to school so much. And it was just a huge part of my life. And knowing that my children might not be able to relate to that at all, that feeling of driving a lot, knowing how to drive, knowing your own car and how it feels to drive that car and be really comfortable with it, that's really strange to me. I know that probably they'll be, you know, they can drive cars on tracks, like my brother does autocross, which is kind of like driving your car through cones and stuff, I think. So I'm sure that kind of stuff will still exist, and of course they'll have whatever virtual experiences will have developed by then for driving cars or spaceships or, you know, whatever the video game creators can think of. But I think, I don't know, I don't know, I think it'll be kind of a lack. I think when we think of all of the new technology and all the new things that future generations will have. You don't often think about the things that we lose, <clears throat> excuse me, things that we lose from generation to generation. And I think driving will be one of them and it will be hard to explain to people what it feels like to drive. And I was trying to think of some other things that have been lost between generations. Um, I don't know probably as well as, you know, my parents or anyone who's been around for more than one generation what's been lost in my generation. The only thing I could really think of was handwriting. Uh, I know that my parents hand wrote a lot, obviously. Uh, they were both born during World War II. So there were typewriters, of course, but definitely not computers and people still hand wrote, you know, letters and school assignments and everything. You just wrote a lot on a day-to-day -day basis and everyone knew cursive. Um, I was taught cursive in school in third grade, but it didn't really stick. I mostly print nowadays, kind of a mix between print and cursive. My brother exclusively prints. And I remember my dad being 
surprised that we didn't write in cursive on a daily basis and we just don't and we don't write that much either I mean I, I haven't written anyone a letter longhand you know since I was 10 or something like that and I don't know I don't know if it'll ever go away handwriting will ever go away I, I'm not sure what kind of technology will replace you know jotting something on a post-it note and leaving it for someone or, you know, what you're going to do when you're in the physical vicinity of something you want to leave a message on. So I think people will be able to write in the future. Maybe not forever. I'm sure at some point we'll just, you know, link our brains directly into some sort of ethernet space. And I don't know. Will my children bring laptops to kindergarten and not learn how to write their ABCs? Probably not. Maybe my grandchildren. Probably not laptops. They're like more advanced iPhones. Maybe my grandchildren will have things to plug into their heads. I don't know. But yeah, that's that's pretty much my whole point. Thinking about the things, I've been thinking about the things that we lose from generation to generation. And I think the experience of driving a lot will be one of those things. So I'll be interested to hear y'all's ideas on what other things we might lose from time to time, what things you've lost, what things you think your children might lose. That's it. Bye kids.